Hi everyone, how's all doing? So yeah, it's not really the same, is it? Um, I did say I was still going to do repair videos um, while I'm rebuilding my layout. Uh, so here is my wee temporary loop in my studio room. Uh, this is going to allow me to test run locomotives so I can still do repairs. Um, because, to be honest, I would probably hate not doing repairs more than not having a layout. Um, anyway, this is an old Hornby Double Class 20 that was sent to me by Michael. Uh, he wants me to fit tension lock couplings onto it and to give it a service. So let's see how it runs at the moment. Yeah, it's a bit rough and a bit stuffy starty, but we'll get it into the shed and off to the bench. Alrighty, hold then. Let's get a look at this. Uh, so, yeah, Michael wants me to replace the couplings with uh, tension lock ones, but we'll get a look inside this and we'll give it a service because it's uh, running a bit rough. So the general condition of this is pretty good. There's a bit of wear and tear, but you'd expect that. Let's see what's inside. We've got a nice big screw in the top. So easy. Righty-ho. Oh, right, I was half expecting a, a vertical motor here, but it's not, it's horizontal. So the brushes are worn right down. Um, I don't have replacements for those, I'll need to order some up. The magnet's nice and strong, but we'll remagnetize it anyway. But yeah, we'll get it all cleaned up, we'll get some new brushes, some new lubrication, and uh, I think it'll be fine. Oh, it's got traction tyres on it, on those wheels there. Oh, they're in a bit of a state. Yeah, I'll see if we've got any that fit, because they're in a bit of a mess. Earth is that on that gear? All sorts of dirt and gunk on the gears. Alright, oh, this came in both two rail and three rail versions. Um, obviously, this is a two rail one, but it looks like you could unscrew that to take that bogey off, unscrew that to take this bogey off. It's all very, very simple. That off there. That off there. Fiber washer there. There's that. That's connected to the pickups. You can see the pickups there. Right, I wonder if I undo that. Can I get to that screw there? Do this screw. That comes away. You can see how worn the brushes are there. They're the most worn brushes I've ever seen. So yeah, this model sort of it's it's done a bit of mileage. And do that. So there's four screws that appear to hold the, the, the motor into the bogey frame. I'm going to have to take those out, I think. It's always good fun working on a locomotive you haven't worked on before. Um, and these old double models, they're so easy to work on. Nice big fat screws, nothing too fiddly, it's, uh, it's good fun and I don't worry too much about 
remembering how it all goes back together because I'm filming it. So if I forget, I can just play back the video and see what went where. But with these old models, it's fairly obvious what goes where. And there's always the service sheet as well. All right, all. So these wee screws, the two halves of the bogey frame. Now what I really want to do is to get this motor out. Just check polarity. So the North Pole is on the left. Right, that'll come off. Then that comes off. And now we're into the motor. So listen off the locking nut. There should be a little ball bearing in there. There is. That should now come out. And there's another ball bearing in there. Yeah, it's all jolly dirty. Needs a good clean. Wow, pretty dirty. The monkey brush on these gears, there's quite a bit of gunk in there. Bit of tea cut in the commutator. Just getting the monkey brush in here because it's really thick with gunk. I'll give it a good squish. And who pops the ball bearing? I think that's the dirtiest my towel has ever been. So that's the motor bogey all cleaned up. Need to wait till we get the new brushes. Um, what can we do with this bogey? Yeah, I think we'll give the axles a bit of a clean. Yeah, <laughs> this is the dirtiest locomotive I've ever worked on. In a good way, you know, it's not bad dirt, it's not all full of carpet fibres and pet hair and static grass and all the usual stuff. It is just good, honest, old grease and lubrication. So it's not like the, uh, you know, it's not as if the dirt shouldn't be there. It's just not being serviced. Right, we'll let that all evaporate off and then we'll clean the wheels. Gee whiz. Right, the traction tyres on this are absolutely rotten. And the, the groove of the wheel appears to be really quite deep. I'm going to have to see if I can get some traction tyres for this, I think. I'm not sure I've got any that'll fit this. But they are absolutely rotten. Just disintegrating. Alright, okay. Yeah, big grooves. So I don't think these will fit. Uh, what else have I got? Yeah, I'm going to have to go online and see if I can get some traction tires to fit those wheels. So, um, I'm going to have to go and do a bit of online shopping. And then we'll uh, come back to this. Meantime, I'm going to finish my tea. Okay, so a couple of days later, the new brushes arrived. That's fine. Um, but these traction tyres took over a week to arrive. Um, they were posted second class. Um, I find second class post these days just takes forever to arrive. But they're here. So we shall get these put on, first of all. I don't like it when a spare part takes a long time to come and you've got to, you know, you're putting a dismantled uh, locomotive aside and then you come back to it because... You've kind of lost your, uh, lost the thread of where you were with it, and it's harder to put back together because you're not as familiar with it. It's one of the reasons I like Peter's spares because you order something and you pretty much get it the next day. But I couldn't get these traction tires on Peter's spares. Right. 
Right, okay. So we'll get this back together now and uh, make sure it runs okay. And then we can think about uh, replacing the couplings. Let's get some molly grease into the bearings. Pop the little ball bearing in. And in here. So that goes in there. That will then screw into there. That will then go over like that. The magnet will go there. One, two, and that'll do it. We fit that screw. And I think we'll get these back on. Right here. Now we need to connect this back up and fit these new brushes. That'll hook around there like that. And that'll hook around there like so. Then take these back up. Right, I'm just going to prop this up on the batteries. And we'll get some power onto this. Okay, so we'll get some uh, grease into this. This is a mixture of lithium grease and gear oil. Um, I use this on metal gears, not plastic ones. Yeah, I think I'm probably running okay, I think, at that. That goes on there, that goes on like that. Yep, that screws into there. So that must go in there with that washer. Like so. Right. Let's see if this goes on the test track. Which I just noticed these axles are a bit stiff. Um, I don't think I put any fresh oil, I think that's why. Okay, power on. Well, it works. How's it going to sound with the, uh, the top on? Yeah. A bit grindy sounding, so I think we'll have a fiddle around with it. And it's also got a bit of a wobble, and that'll be the new traction tyres. So I'll need to look at these again. Okay, so I've adjusted the bearing a bit, and that seems to be running reasonably smoothly. Um, there is a wobble, and at first I thought it was the traction tyres, but looking at it, um, now uh, I think it's the wheels. There's no buckle on the wheels, but I just don't think they're uh, perfectly round. It seems to be this wheel here is just not quite perfectly round. So it's causing a wee bit of a wobble. But there's not really much we can do about that. It's just, uh, you know, something you just have to accept these things with these old models. Uh, right, okay. Couplings. Now, um... At first I thought I was just going to fit these old Hornby couplings, but then, and then I realised, well, no, I can't because of the, the hook. You know, there's a big bit sticking out underneath. Um, so I couldn't do that unless I removed the hooks. Uh, but had a dig around, 
and I think uh, these old airfix couplings will fit on fine. So it's just going to be a case of drilling out the rivet and screwing these in using that uh, the little hole there. These are normally like a push fit, but uh, yeah, I think they'll screw on okay. Um, we'll need to check the position of them and also the height, so there might be a wee bit of adjustment required. But I think that's what we'll do. Right, we'll drill out these rivets. it out. So that will sit on there and if it's too low down we can build it up with something. Right, what screws have we got that will fit that? There we go. That looks fine to me. So I think the best thing to do to stop this wiggling about like that is uh, just put a spot of super glue on it. Um, I think that will just hold it in place, but it'll still be easily removable if, if, if you need to remove the couplings. So I think that's what we'll do. Screw that again, and just a wee touch of super glue on there. Pop that on. There we go. I think that'll sort that. Right, we'll do the other one. There we go, couplings on. So normally if I'm going to do a repair to an old locomotive like this, I clean the body up with some uh, warm soapy water. Um, this body is, is quite dirty, but I'm actually going to leave it alone because I think it uh, it actually gives it quite a nice look. Um, I guess you could say it's got a, a certain patina to it. Uh, you know, it looks like a dirty old diesel. It's like it's been weathered almost. So I'm going to leave it alone. Um, We'll give it a wee dust out, um, but I'm not going to clean it. You know, there's a lot of grubbiness on the roof there, and, but yeah, I think it looks okay. Uh, we'll just take the dusty brush to it. That will leave all those years and years and years of handling. Put that on there like that. And there we go. I wish it didn't have that wobble. I may have another look at it, um, but I really don't think there's much I can do about it. But let's go and stick it around the loop. Okay, so I've laid out some of my locomotives that I've boxed away. Um, I thought it would be better to have them laid out like this so I can run them now and again, uh, just to keep them sweet and also to uh, Make these videos look a little bit more interesting. Okay, so let's pull out this old Class 20 from the shed and see how it runs.
So there we are, that's this old Hornby double class 20 running okay and fitted with tension lock couplings. Um, yeah, it was in a bit of a manky old state and needed a good service. Uh, fitted it with new brushes and new traction tyres, gave it all a good clean and an oil and uh, remagnetized it and uh, it actually runs quite smoothly now. Um, it's a real pity it has that wobble, but it's uh, it's either the wheels are slightly misshapen or the axles are worn. Um, you know, the fact that this has this had brushes worn right down to the brass suggests that uh, you know, this has done a fair bit of mileage, so uh, it could just be wear. Um, you know, without having replacement wheels and axles to experiment with, it's, it's hard to be certain, but uh, it does look to me like the wheels are a bit of an issue. Uh, anyway, it runs and it's got tension lock couplings, so job done. I'll get it backed up and sent back to Michael. Okay, folks, catch you later.